It's frequently said that behind every great man, there's a woman. And our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is convinced of the validity of that remark. It's true that in the years she's been going with Philip Boynton, there may have been times when he's been unaffectionate or even inattentive toward her. <laughs> but of one thing, she's been certain that one and only one woman has had any influence on his life. Yes, indeed. And that woman, I'm proud to say, is his mother. <laughs> I wouldn't say that Tilsey is tied to his mother's apron string, because since I've known her, she's never worn an apron. However, he certainly depends on his mother's opinion in practically everything. At times, this isn't bad, because I know she's fond of me, and her impending Thanksgiving visit this past week seemed to produce some excellent results. Last Wednesday morning, Mr. Boynton broke a precedent and invited me on his customary early morning nature walk. It was beautiful in the park early in the morning, and as we walked along with the sun barely visible above the treetops, I felt that Mr. Boynton, just as I, could feel the romantic implications of our setting. Suddenly he stopped, drew me toward him, and in a voice choked with emotion, said, Miss Brooks, look over there. A perfect specimen of the sharp-shinned hawk. Mr. <laughs> Boynton, is that all you have to say? Oh, no. Uh, the sharp-shinned hawk lives almost entirely on small birds, uh, frequently raiding chicken farms. Uh, they're also destructive to quails. However, they're almost never seen in this part of the country. Uh, have you ever seen a rarer bird, Miss Brooks? Only on the Madison High faculty. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, is that why you asked me along on your walk this morning? To show me specimens of wildlife? Well, uh, no, there, there was another reason. It, it was partly Mother's doing. I thought so. Yes. She called me at school yesterday and must have spent half an hour giving me advice. You'd be surprised what she thinks of you, Miss Brooks. And you'd be surprised what I think of her, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> But you shouldn't listen to everything your mother suggests. Oh, I don't. Even though Mom was a school teacher herself for many years, she does come up with some pretty peculiar notions. <laughs> Can you imagine? Now she's after me to get married. As I say, follow everything your mother suggests. <laughs> right for the letter, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> well, if the truth be known, I have thought about it, Miss Brooks. But Mom's idea is that a man should marry a much younger woman than himself. A very young woman, in fact. A very young woman, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> Mom doesn't mean some girl in her teens. Uh, someone more in her early 20s. How much more? <laughs> uh, according to Mom, most women follow that song, uh, they're either too young or too old. Remember that song, Miss Brooks? No, I can't say I do, Miss Boynton. It was popular about nine years ago. Oh, well, that explains it. It was before my time. <laughs> nine years ago? That was before your time? From now on, everything was before my time. <laughs> that is, I don't remember every song from my early teens. Really, I don't know where you Say, got Miss such Brooks, a type idea. <laughs> isn't that Miss Enright standing over there next to that gnarled oak? Why, so it is. For a moment, I couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> Now she sees us. I wonder what she's doing out here. If I know Miss Enright, she was probably listening at the switchboard when your mother was speaking to you yesterday. She's been alternating with Harriet Conklin on the job since our switchboard operator quit again. Well, if it isn't dear, dear Mr. Boynton and his faithful bird dog. <laughs> Imagine running into you out here. What a pleasant surprise. For whom? Good morning, Miss Enright. My, this is a coincidental meeting, isn't it? Yeah, particularly since you had those coincidental earphones over your coincidental ears at that coincidental switchboard yesterday. Well, darling, whatever are you talking about? I'm always taking long walks early in the morning. Do you really enjoy these nature walks too, Miss Enright? Enjoy them? I adore them. Why, I can't think of anything I'm closer to than Mother Nature. What about Father Time? <laughs> Miss Enright. Oh, now, Miss Brooks, if Miss Enright really is interested in nature, she'll want to know what I discovered. Oh, 
indeed I would, Mr. Boynton. Well, I just found a sharp-shinned hawk in the bushes back there. Oh, really? I was wondering where you ran into Miss Brooks. <laughs> a bird. Oh, yes. Well, that is interesting. I'll bet you'll never guess what I ran into. What? A pair of the most beautiful field mice. Oh, good. Then I'll be wearing my pinafore and pigtails. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Miss Brooks. Oh, Connie, there you are. I was hoping you'd be back soon. How was your walk, dear? Well, it helped me to lose my appetite. Oh, did you eat on the way? No, we met Miss Enright. Well, anyway, the walk gave your face a bright glow, dear. Why, you even look younger. I ought to. I'm at least nine years younger than when I started out. <laughs> I've got a big surprise for you this morning, dear. Some people I know you'll be glad to see are in the next room. Really? What are their names? Odell. Oh, Come dear. along, dear. They're waiting for you. Well, here they are, Connie. Mr. George O'Dell and his father. Mr. O'Dell says he's an old grad of yours. Well, I'm always glad to meet an old grad. How are you, George? Uh, you're shaking hands with my father. I'm your old grad, Miss Brooks. Oh. <laughs> oh, of course. How silly of me. Now, let's see. You must have graduated from Madison at least three or four years ago. Uh, no, no, I was in your English class when you were teaching at Jefferson High nine years ago. <laughs> you were just starting to teach then. I know. I began teaching there as soon as I got out of kindergarten. I mean, uh, <laughs> I was very young. You're probably just now getting started in the business world, eh, George? No, uh, George is a doctor, Miss Brooks. A doctor? Well, that's just as well. The way I feel now, I'm going to need one. Well, I knew you'd be surprised to see me, Miss Brooks. Oh, surprised isn't the word for it, George. How soon are you getting out of town? That is... <laughs> How long are you staying in town? Well, we were just passing through, Miss Brooks. George has a patient to see in town and wanted very much to see you again. And uh, since I'm an old grad of your principal, Mr. Conklin... I thought it would be great to see him. Mr. Conklin taught you, Mr. O'Dell? That's right. At McKinley High 30 years ago. He was just starting to teach himself at the time. I wonder if he's changed. No, he hasn't taught himself a thing since. <laughs> so Mr. Conklin was teaching 30 years ago. That's right. He was very young. Well, if I know Mr. Conklin's reaction, he stepped right out of the cradle into that job. <laughs> Well, it's certainly nice to see you both. Uh, I uh, suppose you'll be in town at least a couple of hours. Oh, we planned on being here longer than that. How long? Three or four hours? No, dear. They're staying overnight. And Connie, since George tells me he was such an old favorite of yours, I have another little surprise for you. What is it, I'm reasonably sure? <laughs> I've asked him to stay with us overnight. Now, isn't that a real surprise for you? I may never recover. Hello there. I'm Radcliffe Hall. Well, with Mr. Boynton's mother urging him to get married to a much younger woman, and with me doing my best to be that much younger woman... It was quite a problem when an old grad of mine decided to show up, particularly when said old grad happened to graduate from another school I had taught at nine years ago and was staying at my house the same night Mr. Boynton's mother was due for a visit. I was passing the refuse cans in the main hall at noon, deeply engrossed in my problem, when I suddenly ran into something soft. No, grad! Sorry I ran into you, sir. Where are you? <laughs> Under the third refuse can on your left. Well, I'm awfully 
awfully sorry, sir. Can I help you up? And why not? You helped me down. <laughs> of all the frightful, premeditated attacks you've made on my person, this is the worst. Just look at this suit. Well, luckily I can brush most of this stuff off. Of course you can, and fortunately nothing happened to the brown hat you're wearing. <laughs> that happens to be the remains of a half cantaloupe. <laughs> I should consider myself fortunate that I'm still in one piece. And it so happens I wanted to see you anyway. I have a message for you. A message, sir? Yes. A George O'Dell called to see if there was anything he could bring over to your house this evening. Oh, yes, of course, George O'Dell. Uh, he's an old graduate of ours, sir. Graduated two or three years ago. Two or three years ago, eh? He happens to be Dr. George O'Dell, Miss Rose. Well, he always was a quick student. <laughs> Don't you remember him, sir? Well, I can't say that I do, since I wasn't teaching at Jefferson High nine years ago. Or was it 11 years ago? <laughs> I'll settle for nine. <laughs> However, I know how you feel, Miss Brooks, since I'm faced with a similar predicament. His father has the fantastic notion that I taught him 30 years ago. Can you imagine me teaching anyone anything 30 years ago? <laughs> No, sir, I have a tough enough time imagining it today. <laughs> it does seem fantastic. Why, 30 years ago, I was barely out of swaddling clothes. <laughs> but frankly, Miss Brooks, I'd give anything if Odell Sr. didn't think I was the same man who taught him years ago. But why, sir? Well, I'm up for the job of assistant school supervisor for this district. That would mean my relinquishing this position. However, the one obstacle in my way is that Mr. Stone wants a slightly younger man. The truth of the matter is I'm going on 44. Yes, sir, but where are you coming from? <laughs> As you don't look a day older, sir. Oh, no, I know, and I've practically convinced Mr. Stone I'm young enough for the job. However, since Odell knows Mr. Stone, this could ruin the whole thing. I wish there was some way I could convince Odell I'm not the same man who taught him. Would you help me, Miss Brooks? Oh, yes, sir. I'd do anything to get rid of, uh, to help you. <laughs> it really shouldn't be too difficult if he hasn't seen you in all these years. Why, all you really have to do is shave off your mustache and darken your hair at the temple. But he knows my name, Miss Brooks. Well, you could put a junior in front of it and say you were old Osgood Conklin's son. Yes, yeah, yeah, it might work at that. But <laughs> frankly, Miss Brooks, I haven't got the nerve to shave my mustache off myself. Uh, would you be good enough to do it for me? I've got shaving cream and a razor in my... A razor in your hand! <laughs> I'd resist the temptation, even if I didn't know how strict the police are about such things. Well, I don't suppose there's much choice. Come along, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Now, you just get out the shaving cream and razor while I get a cup full of water from the cooler, and we'll go to work. Very well. Yes. Ah, here we are. Now, just sit down and put your head back. Oh. There. Now, hold still while I apply this shaving cream. And Mr. Conklin, stop clutching my hand. This isn't going to hurt a bit. Mm. Now for a good dab of shaving cream. There. All right, sir, here we go. Goodbye, old friend. Now, there goes one side. Here goes the other. There we are. How does it look, Miss Brooks? Oh, fine, sir. I've never seen your face in the nude before. <laughs> oh, Miss Brooks, wait up a minute. Oh, I'm glad we caught you before you left school. Oh, hello, Walter. Harriet. Hi, Miss Brooks. Did Daddy see you and give you the message? Is it George O'Dell called? And want you to call him back? Yeah, we got the biggest surprise ever. When we heard you taught this fellow. Nine years ago at another school. And now... He's a doctor. I was wondering what happened to the Andrews sisters. <laughs> One of you is Groucho. <laughs> anyway, 
anyone else know about this old grad besides you two? Well, not that I know of, Miss Brooks. Uh, Harriet got the message from the new switchboard operator. Uh, the only other person who might have known about it is Miss Enright. Uh, she was showing the new operator how to use the switchboard. I'm dead. <laughs> but what difference does it make if anyone else does know about your old grad, Miss Brooks? The reason is strictly personal. It has to do with Mr. Boynton and his mother coming over tonight. Oh, I get it now. And with this Dr. Odell around, it'll make you seem a lot more yeah, mature than you want to appear. Is that the ticket? Uh-huh. And I wish I could use it to take the first train out of town. <laughs> oh, gosh, Miss Brooks, that shouldn't be such a difficult problem to solve. Well, just ask the doc to cooperate and tell him he graduated from Madison a couple of years ago. Well, I'm sure Mr. Boynton doesn't remember every student. Walter, you may have an idea. Well, sure. Yeah, I'll just lend the doc a sweater of mine and a few other things, and he'll look like a very recent graduate. You know, I think that might do it. Yes, I'm sure it will. Walter, I could kiss you. Miss Brooks, you wouldn't. Oh, don't worry about Walter and me, Harriet. As things stand now, I'm much too young for him. <laughs> it's awfully nice of you to help me out this way, Doc. Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. I quite understand the situation now. Well, this Madison High sweater should help me look like a recent graduate. Yes, and that beanie with two propellers helps even more. <laughs> Now all you need is a silly grin on your face, and you'll look like every member of my senior class. <laughs> well, I guess the Boyntons ought to be here any time now. Didn't you say 8.30, Miss Brooks? Yes, that's right, and Mr. Boynton's always right on the dot. Well, my watch says 8.30 and 30 seconds now. Your watch is 30 seconds fast. <laughs> uh, George, although you look like a recent Madison graduate now, I'd like to avoid any slip-ups. So if I can get rid of the Boynton's without having them meet you, I'd prefer it. Okay, then I'll stay in here until you want me, Miss Brooks. Good. Well, Mrs. Boynton, how are you? Uh, well, Miss Brooks, and how are you? Well, you're looking just as fine as ever. Um, well, you're looking just as fine as ever, too. Well, you certainly haven't changed a bit. Well, you certainly haven't changed a bit either. Well, uh, this time you go first. <laughs> uh, please come in. Come in, Mr. Boynton. Well, it certainly is a pleasure to have you two over. Well, it certainly is a pleasure for us to be here. Well, it, oh, no, you won't trap me into that again. <laughs> now that you're both here at my house, I have an excellent idea. What? Let's go out to a movie. Movie? Uh, Miss Brooks, Mother had a rather tiring trip. Uh, would you mind if we stayed home tonight? Not at all. Let's go back to your home and stay there. <laughs> well, what Philip meant is that we'd prefer to visit with you here this evening. Now, that wouldn't inconvenience you, would it? Oh, no, of course not. But it's rather stuffy in here. The heating system's on the blink, and it's awfully warm. Oh, anyway, Miss Brooks, we're both extremely anxious to meet the old grad Miss Enright told me about. Yes, sir, it's getting warmer by the minute. <laughs> what a fantastic story she told me about him, too. Wait till you hear it, it'll kill you. It may, it's that. <laughs> she said he graduated in your class nine years ago when you were teaching at another school. Why, nine years ago, you were probably just getting out of high school yourself. The ink was barely dry on my grammar school diploma, Mrs. Boynton. But if you'd like to meet our old graduate, George O'Dell, he's reading in the other room. Oh, Georgie! Wait till you see him. He graduated from Madison three years ago. Yes, ma'am? Do you want me, ma'am? Yes, Mr. Friday. Uh, George. <laughs> Say hello to Mr. Boynton and his mother. Hello. Uh, I, I hope we didn't interrupt your reading, George. Oh, that's okay. I'd gotten through the part where the Batman killed the purple giant with his ray gun. <laughs> As you can see, a typical graduate of Madison High. George gradu graduated three years ago. Three years ago? That's strange. Oh, I would have remembered him if he graduated then. Well, certainly, you can't remember every student who graduated from the school, Mr. Boynton, but George said he remembered you, didn't you, George? Uh, uh yeah, sure. Um, 
Mr. Boynton's the best French teacher I ever had. I teach biology. It probably sounded like French. <laughs> what did you expect? If you can't remember him, why should he remember you? But I remembered most other students, Miss Brooks. Uh, did you participate in any extracurricular activities, George? Well, um... Uh, I was on the debating team three years ago. I was coached that year. Well, it's certainly too bad nobody bothered to introduce you to. <laughs> but I don't see why... And very welcome, too. I'll get it. Miss Enright. Good evening, Miss Brooks. I was just driving by, so I thought I'd drop in and see Mrs. Boynton and meet that old grad of yours. You don't mind if I come in, do you, darling? I don't know what else I can do with your foot in the door. <laughs> uh, good evening, Miss Enright. Well, Mr. Boynton, and your dear, dear mother. How are you, dear, dear Mrs. Boynton? One more dear, and you'll be over the limit. <laughs> oh, this must be your old graduate, Miss Brooks. It's funny. George graduated from Madison three years ago, but uh, I can't seem to remember him. Uh, can you, Miss Enright? Of course I can. Uh, oh, oh! suddenly I, I'm beginning to feel faint. Oh, Miss Enright. Uh, Miss Enright, what is it? Oh, I, I don't know. Everything's beginning to go wrong. Uh, please, maybe you'd better get me a doctor. Good heavens, she's fainted. Oh, uh, maybe if I slap her face, it would bring her around. Oh, no, let me have the fun. <laughs> I need to get some water. Oh, that's an idea. Mr. Boynton, dash out into the kitchen and get a bucket full, and we'll throw it on her. Oh, where, where am I? In the middle of the best sick bed scene since Camille. <laughs> oh, I have such pain. Get me a doctor, please. Get me a doctor quickly. All right, Miss Enright. If you'll wait a moment, I'll see what I can do. I've got my little black bag in the closet. Your little black bag? He's got to have some place to put his little comic books, doesn't he? <laughs> Here we go, Miss Enright. Well, what do you know? He's a doctor. Then it was true. He did graduate nine years ago. Just as I was getting out of grammar school. Uh, now, uh, where does this hurt, Miss Enright? Well, uh, I feel somewhat better now, Doctor. My trouble seems to have passed. Mine's just beginning. <laughs> yes, it's true, Mrs. Boynton. Dr. O'Dell was my pupil nine years ago, and I'm not 21. I'll take it this time, Miss Brooks. That's probably Dad getting back from his visit with Mr. Conklin. Hello, Dad. Hello, George. Well, Miss Brooks, you have quite a little gathering here, haven't you? How are you, Mr. O'Dell? Why, Sally Boynton, as I live and breathe. I beg your pardon. Do I know you? Know me? Don't you remember little Harry O'Dell? The kid you were teaching when I was at Wadsworth Junior High 35 years ago? <laughs> Eureka! <laughs> you, 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 you must have the wrong woman. I was a mere slip of a girl 35 years ago. Why, you yourself can't be over 40. Well, that brings George down to 19 and me back to 21. <laughs> Mr. O'Dell. Oh, well, anyway, Miss Brooks, what difference does age make? If I've said that to my Philip once, I've said it to him 50 times recently. But, Mother, for, for the last few weeks, you've been in... You heard your mother, my Philip. Uh, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> and I agree with her. There's only one age qualification that I must insist on. What's that, Miss Brooks? That the Justice of the Peace is young enough to remain standing throughout the ceremony. <laughs> recognized Mrs. Boynton as his old teacher, it appeared to settle the age problem once and for all. However, all precincts hadn't been accounted for. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Conklin. I want to thank you for that brief... 
brilliant little scheme of yours. Why, sir? Didn't you get the job? I most certainly did not. Didn't my scheme work out? Oh, your scheme worked fine. Much too fine. Then how could Mr. Stone think you're too old for the job? He doesn't. Now he thinks I'm too young. <laughs> you know, Miss Brooks, there are times when I wish you'd resign from Madam. Well, if you wait a little while, that might not be necessary, Mr. Conklin. What do you mean? A few more days like this, and I'll be old enough to retire. <laughs> 